Welcome to Managing Your Sources. In this session, you'll learn four key steps for managing information and be introduced to a free online tool available to help you with the process. To be honest, my goal in this session is to convince you to learn how to use Zotero. I love this tool because it enables me to do all the steps that are essential to good management of sources. These four steps are saving sources, taking notes, keeping a log of search strategies, and organizing and outlining ideas. So there are other options for saving sources than to use Zotero. You could create an account inside each of our research databases and save items into a folder, just like you might have an account with multiple retailers like Target, Chewy, and Zappos, and save items that you're interested in buying into a card. Each of our databases allows you to create an account to save articles or books so that you can come back and access them later. You could also easily download the materials that you want to your computer and organize them in Google Drive or in a filing system on your computer. The best option, however, is to use a citation manager like Zotero. This will let you install an extension into your browser that will alert you with an icon in your browser toolbar each time it identifies citation information on a page. Clicking on this icon adds the citation information from the page to your own personal database of resources that lives on your computer and inside the cloud. Zotero is the citation manager that McCain Library loves the most, but many people also enjoy using Mendeley. Both of them have similar features and the differences are really minuscule. The only difference is the look and feel of the interface. Try each of them out and see which one you prefer. In today's session, we'll be talking exclusively about Zotero. Now that you know how to easily gather all your sources into one place, let's talk about engaging with those sources. If you are following along with your own research project, Look at the lists of sources that you already have and decide which will be the best one to start reading. Again, there are many options for taking notes on a source. You could create a working bibliography in a Google or Word doc that lists the citation for each source and includes a summary of the key points and quotes from the source. You could use the highlight feature in your PDF reader to identify important parts and then use the comments to write a reflection about the meaning of each point. There are also programs like Power Notes that allows you to create an outline of an idea and immediately insert relevant passages into your outline by highlighting the text found in web-based documents. Zotero has a note-taking tool that will allow you to open up a text file associated with a citation where you can take notes just like you would in a Google Doc or a Word Doc. And when you close this note-taking document, it will remain associated with the citation so you can quickly review your notes for each source when you're ready to begin organizing your paper. Zotero even has a new feature that lets you highlight PDF documents and keep a modified document in your Zotero library. Here is an example of how the notes text box can be popped out of Zotero and placed next to a document or a video you're analyzing. This is a screenshot of my desktop. As you can see, the text box is on the right and I'm taking notes on a video that I'm watching on the left. Normally I minimize the Zotero library that's represented here at the bottom so that I have more room for note taking, but I just wanted to make sure that you could see that my note is actually attached to the citation that I created for this video inside my Zotero library. Isn't that helpful? So like I said, Zotero even has a new feature that lets you open PDFs that you have saved on, into your Zotero library and take notes on that PDF directly. The edited PDF is then saved and the site with the citation, and any notes you created are included with it, so all the highlighting marks are there captured inside your Zotero library. This looks like this is what it looks like on in my Zotero library. It looks just like my standard PDF reader, but it's really my Zotero library. If I click on the assignment two tab, it'll take me back to the list of sources that I've collected in my Zotero library. For ideas on what to include in your notes and improve your note-taking skills, watch the Reading a Scholarly Article module created by Christopher Bishop in McCain Library, and the Literature Review Summary versus Synthesis module created by Imani Youngbae in the Center for Writing and Speaking. Both of these provide excellent tips on how to analyze a work and take effective notes. Your process of gathering sources will involve many tools and strategies. To keep track of what you already have tried, we recommend keeping a running log of search strategies. The St. Martin's Handbook by Andrea A. Lunsford provides great recommendations for research log options. These include a private blog, a folder on your computer, or a binder with dividers if you want something that's more tactile and print-based. As you probably guessed, we like Zotero as a place to keep your search log. Just create a standalone note in the collection for your research project. In the Note List Places 
to search helpful keywords and questions you're trying to answer. Here is a note that I created in my Does My Cat Love Me research collection. Notice that I clicked on the sticky note button to create a new standalone note, and then in the text box on the right, I wrote out my initial search strategy. As I try different things, the list under each heading will grow. So I know that um, I can see what kind of strategies I've tried and what kind of questions I'm still trying to answer. All right, now we're getting to the fun part of managing sources. Once you have a collection of sources, you can start organizing them into categories that show relationships between the sources. When you do this in preliminary stages of research, it can help you in developing your ideas for what is being said in the published literature. When you're ready to write your paper, you can create new groupings based on the core concepts that you want to address. This is where Zotero is really powerful. As you probably noticed, I created many collections in my Zotero library. You can see these on the left-hand side. And I created them by right-clicking on my library, which is at the top, and naming a new collection. In each of the collections, I can save my sources. I can also drag sources from one collection into another. Then when I'm ready, I can right-click on my collection and create sub-collections. This will enable me to take the sources that are in that collection and divide them into subcategories. So I can drag and drop sources from the main collection into these subcollections. Essentially, this outlines my paper and makes it easier for me to manage my time when writing my paper. When I'm ready to write a particular section, all I need to do is click on the subcollection for the topic I plan to address, review my notes, and begin writing my paper. Notice that under my health insurance and energy burdens collection, I have four subcollections that address different sections of this paper topic. Then there's also a collection called Works Cited that contains all the citations that are actually used in the paper for this topic. This is really, truly my favorite part about Zotero. I just think it's so helpful to have a place where I can engage with my sources and think about how they connect with each other and have the tools to be able to move them about. Okay, I should stop technically because the presentation is finished, but I couldn't let you go without telling you the thing that students love the most about Zotero. Did you know that it will cite your sources in over 8,000 citation styles? I know, who knew there were so many citation styles? Zotero lets you create a bibliography from a specific collection or an individual work. It also has a cite while you write feature in Google Docs and Microsoft Word that lets you add citations into the text of your document and builds a bibliography based on the sources that you added. For more in-depth tips from an easy to read source, we recommend consulting the St. Martin's Handbook by Andrea A. Lunsford. It has several quick, easy, to read sections about organizing sources, evaluating your sources, taking notes, and keeping a research log. Well, that's it. Thanks for listening. If you need any help, contact a librarian or a CWS tutor. We would really love to meet with you.